Just knowing a little bit more about selling, if you've never sold before, you've never been in a sales role before, in this series of live stream today and tomorrow, we're gonna to be talking more about influence and the concept of influencing internally in your organization, uh, if you're a manager or if you're somebody who's working in project management, or also more about selling. So I know there's a bunch of people out there that you know, you're know you looking at career changes, you're looking at opportunities. If you can get yourself into a sales role, it's the kind of role that's gonna protect your career for the rest of your life. So in this particular live stream, we are gonna be talking more about how to sell when you've never sold before. And I'm gonna give you some really simple ABC starting tips for those of you out there who are thinking about getting into this or maybe just exploring the concept. So let's just quickly talk about that um, and we'll get into what we're gonna to cover today. I'm just gonna give you some 101, you know, very beginner concepts around sales and selling. I'm gonna talk about, you know, maybe who is a sales person and a selling person when you don't realize that you are, are actually doing those kinds of things. So let's start with some of the, you know, the salespeople that you might meet you know, on a on a day to day basis, you might be work. You might be going to a grocery store. The person at the checkout in the grocery store is a salesperson. They're they're more of an order taker. So they're you know they're processing your groceries and putting it through. But they're still a salesperson. They're they're a point of sale. A sale transaction is taking place. You're putting your groceries on the conveyor belt. They're being scanned, or you're at the grocery store, and you're getting your groceries. That person is a salesperson. You know, they're helping you with your transaction they're helping you and they're facilitating that transaction. Those kinds of roles are not necessarily uh, attracting a commission because they're a bit more like what we would talk about as an order taker. You can have people that are farmers, you can have people that are hunters. So we start talking about, you know, people that are hunting for sales, people that are really looking for, um, you know, they've got products and services that they can sell. Uh, they're looking out there in the marketplace for people that they can provide those products and services to. Um, and that's where you might come across people that are a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more focused. Uh, there's obviously the order takers or account managers. So there's lots of different categories. So in this particular live stream, we're gonna go through and talk about some of those categories. And I'm gonna give you some tips and insights into what you can do as somebody who's never sold before. So before we get into that, it's always really great to uh, see who's come online for our live webinars. And uh, Luke's given me an enormous dashboard here in the studio. We're getting more of our equipment set up um, from time to time. Uh, there's a little bit of background noise because we've got people here doing some selling um, on the phone, making lots of phone calls today. That's Joseph, so, um, so he's around. So what um, is really interesting for me is if you are watching this live or you're watching it after the recording is uh, comment where you're watching from. I think I can see Stan there. G'day Stan, good to see you again. Hello, thanks for joining us. So uh, anybody else who's watching either live on YouTube or live on LinkedIn, uh, let me know where you are watching from. And that is the place to ask questions. So if you do want to ask questions, uh, uh, ask the question in the comments and that really helps me uh, help you with any challenges you that you might have so question for you guys in thinking about the next three months will you be doing any sales or selling is that something that you're looking at doing more of um, and, and have a think about that myself personally I've been selling since I was 15 years old uh, when I was 15 I was selling um, you know fishing tackle and bait you know prawns and and different uh, pilchards and, and sardines and things like that, you know, fishing tackle and bait. Uh, I was working for a little general store that had some little fishing boats. Um, it, you know, we sold uh, meat pies, we sold uh, lunches, we sold sausage rolls, we sold hot chips, we sold burgers, we sold ice creams, we sold soft drinks, and we sold, uh, obviously sold fishing tackle, and we had little hire boats. And so I realized, without sort of knowing the terminology, I realized that I could upsell people pretty quickly into, you know, hey, you're taking out one of our hire boats. This is the kind of fishing tackle that you need for the for the exactly for the fish in the river system uh, that that where where our hire boats were. Uh, this is the bait you need. This is the fishing tackle you need. This is the place to go. So you know, I wasn't charging them for this is the advice on this is the place to go, but to guarantee you a better result out here because otherwise you're just guessing. I've got the local knowledge, so I was using my local knowledge of the good fishing spots to give them the right fishing tackle and the right bait to, to get a better guarantee of them going and catching some fish. Hey, while you're out there in the boat, uh, wouldn't it be great to take some snacks and food with you, take some crisps and some chips with you, take some hot chips and maybe some, some lunch and some drinks um, and some ice for your, for your uh, esky. 
uh, offer your chili bin or your cooler. Uh, so those kinds of things. And then I realized when I was 15 years old that that was actually selling. Um, and I would see these great smiles on people's faces. They would go out and they would be all excited and anticipating their great boat trip. And then they would come back excited because they'd caught some fish. And they're like, we're really grateful for the advice. Thank you so much for, for helping us have a really great experience. So what I want to get to for those of you that have maybe haven't done any sales and selling is, I, is, is what I'm motivated by is the smile on the person's face. I'm motivated by the positive experience and I'm motivated by that person coming back and saying, hey, thank you very much. I really appreciate everything you did for me to help me. So a salesperson's objective is to provide a service and help someone solve a problem. So I know that thinking about sales and selling for a lot of people can be quite confronting. I know some of you have thought about that in the past. It's like, oh, I don't want to be a salesperson. salesperson. They're slippery and they're slimy and they're, they're cringeworthy. Um, they're not necessarily great people out there. And you think, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want that label of being a salesperson because, because in my head, that person is like, um, they're not trustworthy. So that's you. That's not the salesperson. And that is, you have to understand first and foremost, that is a picture that you've made up in your mind. And you may or may not have had that experience. And I would often argue that you actually haven't had that experience. You haven't, if you really think about it, have you actually had an experience with a salesperson that was untrustworthy? And that in my experience, most people when I ask that question have maybe had that experience 10% of the time. So one in 10 people has actually had an experience where they actually gave a salesperson money and that salesperson sold them something that didn't actually meet their needs or wasn't their product or service. Of course, if you're walking through a shopping center or a shopping mall, you're gonna get approached by lots of people. You know, they're gonna walk up to you and try to sell you, uh, you know, maybe charity donation. Maybe they're gonna try to sell you something that's in the middle of the mall or in a marketplace but have you actually ever given somebody that money? So what we wanna to start to think about is what's the five-star version of the situation? The five-star version of the situation is actually that the salesperson asks you a whole bunch of questions to just make sure ethically that they can get the smile on your face. So I know that most of you listening, if I ask the question, do you wanna be an ethical or an unethical salesperson? Well, everyone's gonna say, well, I wanna be an ethical salesperson. I get that and I empathize with that and, and I wanna be that too. What high performance professional salespeople get their kick out of is helping people meet their needs. They're not necessarily driven by money. They're not necessarily driven by, you know, taking your money and then not thinking about you after the sale. They're thinking about the fact that if I can do a great service for you, then you're gonna tell more people, more people are gonna to come to me, my job's gonna get easier. That's how high performance salespeople think. So the first thing we've gotta be doing in some of the basics of if you've never sold before is get your mindset right. And that is that, what you're, what you're doing is you're helping people. And if you're somebody who likes helping people, then what you are actually doing is selling and influencing people. Now, whether there's a commercial financial transaction involved or not, that's exactly what you're doing. And that's what I get my kicks out of, as I've said. So we can, I, I think the point number two is you can start to look at where can you go and get some books? Uh, where can you go and get some advice? I've got a huge pile here. I've got probably 20 books sitting on the floor beside me here in the studio. Um, and we can get into this and we can talk about, you know, different books and different things. This particular book here, we can judge a book by its cover. It's, it's trying to attract and reach a specific audience and it's the, it's the art of closing the sale. But what I thought I'd demonstrate to you guys here, this is Brian Tracy, um, absolutely one of the best sales authors on the planet. Um, I would highly recommend a bunch of his books. Uh, this is one of his very early books and it says the key to making more money faster in the world of professional selling. This is, a, this is attracting a salesperson who is looking to make more money. But what we're talking about here and what I'm trying to reach you guys with this particular uh, video is about if you've never sold before and you really need to get out and you need to do more selling, you need to sell yourself in an interview. You need to sell yourself to your colleagues in your organization, in your workplace. You need to sell your ideas, sell your concepts. You're not necessarily interested in the key to making more money faster in the world of professional selling. And, and that doesn't attract me to this specific book, but I know Brian Tracy is a very, very good author. And so I know that you could pick this book up and you will learn something from it. So for, for, for $20, uh, for you know, 20 Australian dollars, 15 US dollars, you know, um, 10 UK pounds. I see Sarah, you're watching there from the UK this morning. Welcome, thanks for joining us. 
Um, so anyone who has joined us, let us know where you're watching from in the comments. So comment below or beside the video if you're watching on LinkedIn or if you're watching on YouTube. Um, you know, let me know where you are watching from. Where in the world are you this morning? We have a great global audience. If you are watching the recording after the live event, uh, still let me know because I see all of the notifications and all the comments on all of our videos and I try and respond to everybody. So that's not what we're talking about today, but that's an early book by Brian Tracy where he is trying to reach people with this book who wanna make more money in professional selling. What Brian Tracy has gone on to do is write this little series of management books, which I'm just gonna quickly show you these little tips and trick books, these ones here. He's written a whole bunch of books and initially guys, you guys might be interested in on being a better leader. So he started talking about leadership. Um, another book that he's talked about is management. These are little tiny guidebooks that you can pick up for maybe $10, they're cheap, uh, they're excellent, they're from Brian Tracy, just the little gold nuggets of information, tips and insights from Brian Tracy on these sorts of topics which might be relevant, relevant for us. Do you wanna be a better leader? So when you start leading people and influencing people, do you wanna be a better leader? Do you wanna be a better manager? You know, and I wanna just get your attention with these books. The book I'm reading at the moment is called High Output Management. You know, how, you know the, my success is not predicated on how good I am at selling. My success is predicated on how well I motivate my team and train my team to do each of their jobs. And so this book here, High Output Management, um, well recommended. So what we're here to do today is talk about sales and selling. I wanna just show you these other couple of books. One more before I get into the sales ones, Hiring and Firing. So if you don't know how to hire and fire somebody, then start doing some reading on it. And, and I wanna be better. I want, if I have to fire somebody, I want that to be an amazing experience for them. So they thank me. I don't want them to be like, you know, I don't wanna be that evil person that they never speak to again. If I need to let somebody go, I, it needs to be for the right reasons and it needs to be done in a professional way and it needs to be done in a five-star way. And, and selling needs to be done in a professional way and it needs to be done in a five-star way as with everything. And that's what we talk about here at Best Practice. What are the best practices? So these little great books, now what Brian Tracy has done is he actually started with these ones. So I'll, I'll show you what we're here to talk about is sales success and sales management. And so this particular book, I am working through chapter by chapter with our head of commercial, Kelly John Woods here at Best Practice and the sales team at Best Practice. We're working through this one, the man you know, myself and the manager um, of, of the sales team. And then this one, which is sales success, we've given to all our business development managers to start reading and start working through and talking about. Great little books that are the 101s, just the reminders so that people don't sort of go off the rails because we need to remember that what we're trying to do is create the five-star version of the situation. If you guys have got any comments, I'm watching the comments. If you've got any question, I'm watching the comments on my dashboard. So as we go through this video, if you wanna ask a very specific question about your specific contents, please context, please do that in the comments and, and I'll get to that. I've got a huge dashboard here in the studio up behind the camera and, um, and Luke's looking after that for me. Okay, so let's get back to what we're actually trying to do. The first thing we wanna do is set ourselves up for the five-star version of the situation. I see that there are three parts to a sale. So if you are going to do an interview to sell yourself, if you are going to sell a product or a service, um, and there are three parts to that. It's a, it's a linear process, if you like. The linear process essentially is that we need to do massive information gathering. It would be unethical of you to sell something to somebody, take money from someone and give them a product or service if, it's, if they have no need for that, if they have no want for that, if they've got no desire for that, that is unethical. And so when we talk about professional sales and selling and the ABC steps, if you like, if you're going to meet with somebody or you're gonna meet with them once or you're gonna meet with them multiple times, it's to divide that time into three parts. You're dividing the first part, the first third, if you like, the first 33% of the time is to be is spent doing massive information gathering. Genuinely speaking, because you have a lot of experience with your product or service, the person that you're going to meet with, do they have a genuine requirement, a genuine need for your product or service? Or are you just trying to get money because you need money, you're needy, you've got bills to pay, I just need money, I just need money, I don't care who it comes from, just give it to me. That's unethical. It's very ethical to ensure that you ask lots of questions. 
So tell me the problems that you've got. Tell me the challenges that you've got all around your product or service. And that's how we operate here at Best Practice. I don't like selling to people who don't need our product or service because energetically it doesn't work long-term and we wanna have long-term loyal relationships, loyal in both directions, um, supportive relationships with our customers and our clients. That's how I like to work. That's how my moral compass works. So I ask our team to do, ask lots of questions. I wanna be 100% confident that we can guarantee the return, the benefits that the client's looking for. If they're looking for key benefits, I'm gonna make a personal guarantee. I will guarantee that our product or service will actually give you the benefit that you're looking for. So, so when you're doing your massive information gathering and you're talking to the person and, and you're starting to just have a conversation, you're not doing any selling, you're asking questions. Because in your own mind, you need to be making a decision. Can I guarantee that they are going to get the outcome? Because if you can't guarantee, without opening your mouth, just in your head, in your own mind, if you can't guarantee the benefit that the client is looking for, then, then you move on to the next person to talk to. And that's very important. And, and we'll start talking about pipeline in a minute and having lots of people to talk to. But what we have to do is in our own mind, before we even open our mouth to talk about our product or service, even if the customer says, tell me about you, tell me about your product or service, you say, look, I'm going to tell you about my product or service, but I can only do that and I want to make sure that I've got everything right and it's, and it's structured in the right way. I can only do that after I've asked you a whole bunch of questions to, to, to just make sure I'm 100% confident that I'm going to be able to guarantee I can give you the benefits from my product or service that you're looking for. I'm not going to be talking about my features. I'm, I want to talk to you about what do you, what are you looking for from this conversation? What are you looking for from this product? What are you looking to achieve in life? What do you want out of life? What are you hoping to achieve? Because what you're gonna be doing is giving me money for my service or my product, and I'm gonna be giving you the upside in return for that. So your money, the money that you're gonna be giving me is less value than the product or service. So I recently bought a new car. Um, the money that I exchanged for that car was far less valuable than the car itself. The car gives me transport, it gives me security, it's my mobile office, it lets me safely transport my family. It's a SUV, so it can go off-road, it can take me camping, it can take me outdoors, it can tow my boat, you know, I've got a, a boat on a trailer. Um, you know, I can take my boat to the boat ramp so I can go out, uh, I can go out fishing and I can go and go out on the river. Um, you know, it can, it can you know, it, I can take clients in it. You know, it gives me all of those benefits. I'm not interested in the features of it, and we can talk about the features. I'm interested, and so that the money that I had in the bank was far less valuable than the actual vehicle itself. And so I make that decision, and I'm very happy with my decision. When somebody actually makes a decision and the money was more valuable, they get a thing called buyer's remorse. And what you don't want to be causing is buyer's remorse. So if you've ever bought something yourself and you've like been remorseful after you've actually purchased that thing, that's buyer's remorse. You either made the decision too quick or the salesperson wasn't helping you on that process. So what we want to be thinking about is the sale is, has three parts to this process, three parts. The first part is massive information gathering. When you can make a decision in your own head without saying anything to anybody that I can guarantee the benefits they're looking for, then you can start your presentation. And you'll start your presentation with a script that goes something like this. Okay, we've, had, we've spent some time together. We've been having a conversation. I've asked you a lot of questions. I really appreciate your time. I've been asking you those questions so that I can ensure that when I make the, this presentation and I talk to you about our product or service, I can show you how it guarantees the outcomes that you're looking for. It guarantees the life you want. It guarantees, you know, the work that's being done, you know, if it's business to business or business to consumer, I can guarantee what you're looking for. And this applies to selling a t-shirt in a, in a um, you know, in a, in a department store, or it, it applies to selling fried chicken at, at KFC in the drive through It applies to selling high value cybersecurity products. It applies to selling houses, cars, service, you know, services. Uh, cruises, holidays, flights, everything. It applies to everything. The second part of this exercise is to say that I'm going to now talk to you about our product or service. I'm going to talk to you about some of the features that it has, but I'm going to talk to you about each feature and how each feature gives you the benefit that you're looking for. So we talk, oh, you need to go, you know, your boss might say to you, go and talk about the features and benefits. 
you need to identify the benefits that they're looking for and then you can talk to each feature. So the motor vehicle that I just purchased, the car I just purchased is white. You know, and, and so the car dealer could have said, well, you know, we've got a white one. The color makes no difference to me. In fact, the reason why I chose white was for a minor benefit. It doesn't look as dirty. So I can go for longer periods of time without washing it because I'm very busy and I can't always get around to washing it. And so I've got a white car this time instead of a black car. I had a black car. You've got a, with black cars, yes, they might look, you know, classy, but you've got to wash them a lot so that they look clean because they look dirty very quickly. I've got a white car this time, a little bit less maintenance, a little bit more environmentally friendly, not so much water, all those kinds of things. My car's parked outside, so it does get dirty and it get, you know, when it rains, it gets rained on, you know, um, you know, birds fly over, it gets bird droppings on it. So it's, it's less likely to show the dirt. So, so that would be a feature to say, okay, well, you know, what are you looking to do? You know, what color car are you looking for? I've got a white one, a white one's going to be less dirty. Um, and so it's going, your life's going to be a little bit easier. It's going to be a little bit less, less maintenance if you're someone who's looking for something that's less maintenance or you're somebody who's looking for something that's like, you know, is, is a brand and, you know, is style. Uh, then, you know, that'll make the black or white suggestion. Um, I'm looking to go off-road. I want to take my family camping. Okay, well, this vehicle is four-wheel drive and you can take this four-wheel drive vehicle off-road. And so it's got a feature, it's four-wheel drive, but it gives you the benefit of being able to go off-road and go camping. Uh, it's a wagon. And so, you know, it's got the benefit of being a wagon. You know, it's got the feature of being a wagon. That gives you the benefit of being able to put your camping gear in the back of the vehicle and a fridge and, you know, sleeping bags and bed rolls and tents in the back of the vehicle so you can go camping. So the feature is it's a wagon. So it's not about the feature, it's about the benefit. And so as you're doing your presentation, which is the middle third, you're talking about each feature and how it maps to the benefits that the person outlined in your massive information gathering. And so Sales 101 is about really helping people to get what they're looking to do, help them achieve what they're looking to achieve. In the final part, it's saying, okay, have you got all of the information you need to make a decision to proceed with this sale today? Let's get you those things you wanted. And when they start saying no, what we're talking about then is objections. And that is the indicator that you haven't done your job properly. So when people say no to you, when you go to sell something to someone and they say no, you haven't done your job properly. It's you, it's not them, it's you. It's, you need to own that. You need to take 100% responsibility for your job and doing the five-star version of the situation and that you didn't do your massive information gathering properly and you didn't do your presentation properly. But it all is not lost. All is not lost. A sale is lost. We call it the death by a thousand cuts. It's never one thing, it's always a thousand things. And so what we need to be doing is we need to be listening to their objections. For example, um, my wife and I went to purchase a new trailer, a caravan, uh, last week. Uh, really excited about the product, really liked the product. But the, dealers, the dealer said that they wanted us to pay for it eight weeks before we could take possession of it. Now for us, that was like, oh, that sounds a bit dodgy. And then when we looked at their online advertising, it said last stock available before Christmas. And we were like, oh, excellent. That means some stock available. We can wait till Christmas. That's only eight weeks away. The ad was typed into incorrectly to mislead us into actually going and buying a trailer or reaching out to them to talk to them about a trailer. They know there's no stock available. And in fact, there's no stock available until September 2021. So that was unethical. So those two things turned us off. They turned us off the product and they turned us off uh, actually the purchase from that organization. And so now that salesperson needs to do a lot of work to get us back online. The next thing that they said is they want a 20% deposit now and then we need to pay full price for the product in, in August next year and then we can have the product in September. So for us, it's like, hang on a minute, we're going to give you our money, 20% of our money, but we can't have it for almost a year. That was the third thing. So it's death by a thousand cuts. That person wasn't listening to our requirements. What he should have been saying is, I know what my stock levels are. I know what you know my lead times are right now. And that person should have been very upfront in the very beginning and said to us, when exactly are you expecting to take possession of this product? And we would have said, we want to go camping after Christmas. We want to take our trailer and go touring after Christmas. And he would have said, look, I'm really sorry, but we don't have any stock available till September. Should we continue to proceed with this conversation or would you like to go and look elsewhere? We would have said we'd like to go and look elsewhere. But what he did was he kept us in the store for an hour. And for me, that was unethical. So I don't trust that person anymore. Now, yes, we still do like the product, but what that prompted me to do was bring other organizations to see if I could get the same or similar product uh, earlier than that.
So I just want you to understand that think about those sales presentations and think about those, you know, those situations and think about well, where that is and those objections. Now he can't close that objection. What he could have said to us, he could have said, well, our stock's not available till September. Um, is that an issue for you? It is if it's full price, but are you prepared to give us a discount? Now, he could have said, you know, in exchange for you waiting patiently, maybe we can get you into something different and you can you can have something that doesn't quite meet your requirements, but it gets you, you, you want to go camping. Can you make a compromise by going in a smaller model? And then when the when the model that you want is becomes available, then we'll swap you over. He probably could have closed the deal for us. Yes, we could have made a small compromise. Yes, it would have, you know, he could have put us into an alternate product, but he didn't listen and he didn't go through that process. So it is a death by a thousand cuts. So it could have been one thing. Yes, we would tolerate that. The second thing, we probably would have tolerated that. The third, fourth, fifth thing, you can start to understand he wasn't listening to our requirements. He was just very fixed in how he was going to deliver. And it was all about him, him taking our money and not actually facilitating us into what we wanted to get out of life would have made us very happy. Instead, it's making us frustrated because we've got to compromise, compromise, compromise. So what you want to be starting to think about is objections. What are the objections? What are the things listening closely to what the people are saying and starting to respond to that so that you can help them achieve their outcomes? Now, it's always about a negotiation and about a compromise, timelines, quality, cost. You don't need to feel like you've got to throw discounts out there straight away. And in fact, that's something I say to my team is, if, if somebody is asking us for a discount, what are we negotiating on? What is it, if we're gonna give a discount, it means that there's part of our service that we can't provide, which is we can't provide them with their, their requirement, and so they're starting to negotiate. Yes, everybody wants to feel like they're getting a cheaper price than they negotiated, but from my perspective, the price is the price. If you wanna motivate me to do the service, then I've told you the price that I wanna charge for that service because I'm actually here to do my job and make money. And I have these honest conversations with people that start to negotiate. I say, I'm here to do my job and make money. And if I give you a discount, I'm not gonna be very excited to work for you. If I give you a 50% discount, I'm just not gonna be interested in giving you the five-star service and helping you get the benefits. And in fact, if the discount is too big, then the question is what is getting left out of the service? And I can guarantee you, if you try to negotiate with me as a salesperson and you try to actually get a, like a ridiculous deal, like 50% off, 60% off, and you start saying that to me, then I'm just gonna walk away because I'm gonna say that actually, I'm just not interested. You don't have the ability to purchase and that's gonna be part of my massive information gathering. Do you know how to buy the product or service? And that's what I'm gonna put back on the buyer. So. You know, I've obviously been in lots of confronting selling situations over my career, but I just want you to understand when you start listening to the objections is, you know, if, if someone says, hey, can I have an, hey, can I have a discount? You can say, well, what would you like me to leave out of the service? And you can say, because you need to maintain your margins. This is paying for your family, your house, your meals, your life. You know, that's what this fin financial transaction is about. You have something that they, they require to get them their benefits in their life. What they have to give you your benefits in your life is money. And so they're gonna be exchanging money for their, their products or services. And remember that the money for them is less valuable than the product or service they want, otherwise they wouldn't be talking to you. So you really wanna be starting to think about that negotiation. Okay, let's summarize. We're talking about three parts to the process. If you've never sold before, massive information gathering. Never start presenting your product or service first up until you fully understand the situation and you understand that you can guarantee an outcome, this specific outcome that they want. So it's very important before you can present your product, never walk into a sale, never walk into a conversation and start presenting straight away. Never walk into an interview and start talking about yourself straight away. For you, your first question is to the other person, if you've never sold before, in thinking about the next three months or in thinking about the end of this process, for you, what does success look like? What is it you really, what do you really wanna get out of this? So then you've got the context, then you can customize what you talk about to specifically suit exactly what they want. And you can make a decision about, can you guarantee it? Can you guarantee that you can give them what they want? If you can't, then it's unethical to proceed. And that's where the ethics of sales and selling comes in. It's not just about closing that deal. And that's, your diff that's the difference between what we would call a used car salesman who just needs to get rid of the stock, doesn't care about the person, versus somebody like myself who is very ethical in terms of making sure that I can guarantee the outcomes. And in fact, my position is 
if I can absolutely guarantee the outcomes, then it would be unethical of me to stop talking to that person. It would be unethical of me to leave that person alone because I know that I can guarantee the outcomes. And, and in fact, I'll make the decision in my head, would I do it for free? Because I know they need those outcomes. I know they require those outcomes. Am I in a position to give it to them for free? It's either full price or it's free. It's never discounted, it's never in the middle because it would be unethical of you not to help that person. If you know that you can help that person, if I know that I can help you to understand how to learn to sell if you've never sold before, I'm giving this to you right now for free. Now, what I can say is that you only can get a return on your investment if you make an investment. It's actually better for you. If you really want to put this learning into place and you really want to get dividends from this and benefits from this it's better if you pay for it and i know that from a psychology perspective happy to give it away for free but i know that you won't do anything about it only about one percent of the people that watch these videos or any video online actually do it so that's an accountability question for you is you will be more likely to execute on like learning and online learning if you pay for things now that's not a sales pitch to you guys you guys can go and choose to do whatever you want but i can guarantee if you really want to get the benefits out of something like this you need to make an investment because then you've got what's called skin in the game and again when you give people discounts when you give particularly when you're selling and learning to sell when you give people discounts they won't value your service and in fact, they will value you more. It's counterintuitive. They will value you more if you stick to your guns and stick to your price because they might go off somewhere else and get a discount, but they actually really wanted your product or service. And so from the other product, they will feel, if they got a really cheap price, they'll feel buyer's remorse because they'll, they'll feel still curious as what it would have been like to access your product or service. So I do want you to consider sticking to your, you know, sticking to your guns if people are asking for, for discounts and your response when someone just, if they just come out and say, so do I get a discount? You say, yes, no problems. What would you like me to leave out of the service? What would you like me to leave off the product? You know, can I give you a inferior product? Can I give you a secondhand product? No, no, I want the brand new one. Okay, well, that's the brand new price. So you can, you know, and, and you do have to be, as you can see, you do need to be a little bit bold uh, with this process and, and, and that's the goal. Okay, has anyone got any questions? I can't see any on the dashboard. So I think I'm just going to assume um, uh, everybody's happy. Uh, hey, David, buenas noches. Uh, Buenas noches. Uh, that's uh, that's good evening uh, for you guys watching uh, from up there in Ecuador. Welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us. For you guys watching in the UK, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you are, if you have just come on to join us and you're watching the video, uh, let me know in the comments where you are watching from. Uh, good to have some of our regulars here, as always. Uh, Luke's just going to bring that up there. So, uh, hey Benjamin, uh, thanks for joining us. Hey Luke, uh, Luke's here in the studio actually. Hey Sarah. Hey David. Uh, thanks for joining us. So if you've never sold before, some of those one-on-one -on -one principles. So first and foremost, you know, just have a look around for some sales books and start reading. You know, that's not going to hurt anybody. You're not going to do any damage. You know, inform yourself. And that's what I did. I've, you know, I've been, uh, you know, shooting from the hip really casually trying to figure it out, making lots of mistakes in sales, you know, as I've gone through my career. Um, but now what I do is if I've got a very specific problem, I'll go and look for a specific book. So these, not the hiring, firing, uh, you've got management, leadership, get rid of those. Let me hold up the sales ones. So these two little booklets, great little tiny little, you know, business books that you can get hold of really cheap. For you, you know, success for you, yes, you will. You know, the, the, the highest, yes, you will make money. Success for you is if you do get into sales and selling, I, I've looked at this a lot. I've been in business 16 years. Of all of the people that I know, the people that make the most money are the people that have an element of sales and selling in their role. So if you're somebody who wants to make a little bit more money, when you make a little bit more money, life's a little bit easier, uh, you can get some of those things you want out of life, I can guarantee you that the highest, on average, the highest paid people on the planet that earn per hour more money um, are people that are on a commission basis and they do sales and selling. So it is something that that's why I'm going to keep talking to you guys about sales and selling. Tomorrow, we're going to talk a little bit more about internal influence. Um, and I think that's the session uh, that we've got for tomorrow for you guys. So if you, you are somebody who wants to internally influence a little bit more in your, uh, inside your organization with your team members, I'm going to be taking the influence elements of sales and selling, and I'm going to be applying them to internal conversations, internal project management, internal training, uh, internal com conversations and communication with team members and I'm going to show you how to be more influential, influential, talk to you about being more influential with your team members. That's my job here. I've only got one job here. It's to motivate and train people. 
And so part of that process is how can I be more influential? How can I be more helpful, more acts of service for people in the organization? So there's a couple of great books. This book behind me right here, Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone, very specifically put behind you. Make sure that is in your collection. If you are somebody who is doing professional development, get yourself a hard copy of this book. You can buy it online, you can get it on eBay, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it from Grant Cardone's website. Make sure you have got a copy of this. Even if you are never going to do any sales and selling in your whole career, make sure you have read this book because otherwise you're being sold to. So I think it's just as important. You are going to buy things in your life. And I think it's very important to, if you can understand the sales and selling process, then you can understand how to get you know, and if I'm on the buy side, I'm gonna be actually using the buy side to make decisions. I'm gonna sell something to myself. How can I actually get things that I require in my life and how can I get them cheaper? Exactly what I want, how can I get them cheaper? So there's nothing worse than trying to sell to me because I am a good salesperson. So this book here for you, if you're never gonna do any sales and selling, but you're gonna buy stuff, you're gonna buy a house, you're gonna buy a car, you're gonna buy your groceries, you're gonna buy clothes, you're gonna buy shoes, you're gonna buy dentistry for your kids, you're gonna buy, you know, you're gonna to have to go to hospital. You can use this to negotiate better deals because on the flip side, you can say, I want everything included in the service and I'm not prepared to pay full price. And so for the for a salesperson who is not a 10 out of 10, for a salesperson who's like a three out of a 10 or a four out of 10, they're gonna go up against me, I'm never gonna pay full price. And I use these strategies in reverse to get better discounts and get better deals in my life. And that is what's helped me really accelerate me because I'm using my sales strategies against people. And I can rate people from a sales and selling perspective straight away. I can work out where they're strong and they're weak. And it's like a boxing match. And I can win that boxing match and I can get great deals. Uh, it embarrasses a lot of people around me when I go into a negotiation because they know how good I am at sales and selling. And I'm not trying to do that to be unethical. I've already explained that to you. But from this perspective, it's sell or be sold. You are being sold to and you are being dictated to and you are paying a price that they want to dictate. You're not dictating the price. So this video and this strategy and these books are relevant for everybody because otherwise you're just gonna be like merrily going along and not taking control. I want you guys to take control. I want you to guys to get the things that you want out of life and I want you guys to get the benefits of those things. And if you're not doing the selling, then get a bloody good price. And, and that is my objective for you guys. So, so whether you buy these little books, the, the books from Brian Tracy, the sales success and sales management books, whether you buy that's irrelevant. This book right here by Grant Cardone has to be in your collection so that you can understand the whole sales process and you can understand how to get what you want out of life. With the minutes we've got left, um, uh, Stan Wall, skin in the game and being shown to invest in yourself is key to setting worth in yourself as a leader. I agree, absolutely, Stan. Thank you for your comment there on LinkedIn. You absolutely have to have skin in the game. Like people you know, talk about the investment that I've made in all of the business books that I have. They're paying dividends. You, it's absolutely measurable. The amount of money that I've invested in books and knowledge uh, in the last 10 years is absolutely reflected in my income. And I want you guys to all to have a better income and, and, and earn more money um, because that's what we're here to do, right? This is about business and it's about earning and it's about our careers. I want you guys to maybe work a little bit less, earn the same money, earn more money. And exactly what Stan Wall is saying there, you absolutely have to have skin in the game. You can only get a return on investment if you make an investment. You can't get a return if you don't make an investment. So you gotta make the investment. The bigger the investment, the bigger the return. It's really simple. So if you wanna get into sales and selling or if you have to do some sales and selling or you've been forced to do some sales and selling, invest in some learning and development, invest in some great books. What I'm gonna do now for you guys, uh, just towards the end of this video, I'm just gonna see what else I've got here in my book, in my pile of sales. Let me just pick up, I'm just gonna pick up a random sample. Uh, let's see what we've got. Okay, a couple of great books. Um, two here that I'm working on at the moment, um, which I'm doing some, I've obviously got them folded together because they're two similar parts. Uh, this book here is Selling in Tough Times. When the pandemic hit this year in 2020, I went looking for sales books because I was like, if, if it's gonna be harder for us to sell, in, uh, if it's gonna be harder for us to sell in this pandemic, then I wanna get better at selling. And so Selling in Tough Times, I think that's an excellent book. It's really supported us through this pandemic. And uh, this one here is The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. If you have a sales team in your organization, 
It's absolutely mandatory that this Chet Holmes book is on the library in your office or with your team and that your whole sales team has read it. Chet Holmes is the machine. This was recommended to me uh, by Jonathan Cronstead, who is the, uh, I think he is the uh, vice president or president of Kajabi, the online learning platform that we use. Uh, shout out to Jonathan Cronstead for this recommendation when I was at their conference in Irvine in California in 2019, beginning of 2019 or 2018. I can't recall exactly, uh, but he recommended this book by Chet Holmes. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's a foundational book. The strategies in this book and the insights in this book we implement here at Best Practice and absolutely supports our process. So those are two great books that I can highly recommend. And we just we just take the strategies and we implement them. Sixty dollars, two thirty dollar books have created millions of dollars worth of revenue in our organisation. Okay, Shalika's here in the studio. She's got a question there on LinkedIn. How important following? Uh, how important is following up how important is following up after closing of a sale so after sales service or after you've done your presentation let's talk about follow-up um, and Sarah I'll get to your question uh, as well on YouTube in a second um, follow-up is absolutely essential um, there are statistics that say that just from getting an inquiry for small if you're dealing with small business customers you will need to follow up 15 times before you can even get a meeting or get to do the presentation of your sale. So follow-up is absolutely fundamental. If you've done a proposal or a quote or you've given a price to a customer, absolutely following up and ensuring that you deal with all of the objections. When a customer adds time, like they're stalling, 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 then it's every single day that goes past is gonna be less likely that you're gonna close that deal and you just wasted your time. You made an investment in doing the presentation, you made an investment in asking, you made an investment in massive information gathering. You made an investment in doing the presentation and then the customer is not getting back to you. Every day that goes by, it's, it's, it's literally an incremental percentage that you're not gonna close that deal and you're not gonna get that revenue. You're not gonna be able to help that customer. So it's unethical of you not to follow up if you know that your product or service is gonna give them the, the benefits and the guarantees in life that they're looking for. Um, so yes, 100% following up. Then after sales service is more important. I've been on the phone call this morning uh, with a client talking about a project. Um, he, he then unleashed a second project on me, which is hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work just in a passing comment in that conversation, in a two minute phone call. So in a two minute phone call today, I was doing follow up to make sure I'm doing after sales service and make sure the person's happy. He's given me more hundreds of thousands of dollars on another project. So follow up today for us, the profit on that alone is gonna be well over $50,000. So in a five minute conversation today, I made $50,000. So that is something that I want you to understand that follow up Shalika today, how important, it's $50,000 important. And that is, a, you know, it's gonna be hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work for the business. Uh, for me in the long term, me personally, it's gonna be about $50,000. So it's those kinds of things that I want you to understand that are really important and you're missing out on value if you don't do it. Okay, Sarah, you've got a question. How do you think I should proceed with someone who is interested interested in our service so far only two phone calls but he called me back to ask to resend an email and worried about pestering him never worry about pestering them in terms of pestering if you call up and say hey can I close the deal can we go ahead can I give you an invoice that's pestering but if you call up and say hey just checking in with you um, I resent the email what else can I get you information on have you got enough information to make a decision have I shown you that I can guarantee the outcome for you have I shown you everything that you need so that you can do the project? Uh, Sarah, with a little bit more project, I can give you more scripts. But in terms of they've called twice or you've spoken to them twice, you need to probably have 12 conversations with that person to 100% guarantee, to guarantee you'll close the deal. Because with 12 conversations, what's happening is you're going to get a whole insight into that person. You're going to build a friendship with that person. So treat them like a friend. So how often should you call a friend? What should you call a friend for? You know, so you're calling up the friend and you're saying, hey, is there anything else I can help you with? And if you treat that person as a friend, internally, it's gonna feel differently because you're calling, you might be saying, hey, Bob, hey, hey, Bill, hey, hey, Veronica. Hey, Veronica, just checking in with you. I think you said him, he, yes. So, hey, Bob, uh, just checking in with you. Um, I just wanna make sure you're getting everything that you need. Is there anything else I can help you with? Is there anything that I can do to help this? Is that, yeah, okay, excellent. Thanks, Sarah, I appreciate that. So, hey, is there anything else I can get you information on? Have you got everything that you need to make a decision? Um, have I shown you how I can guarantee that I can deliver what you're looking for? 
not the features, the benefits. So focus on the benefits. That, that question, I do that with my sales team all of the time. Hey, what else can I get you information on? Have I given you all of the information that you need to make a decision? Have you got all of the information that shows you that I can guarantee the outcome? Forget about the price. We don't need to talk about the price. I just want to make sure that I've done my job properly in giving you all of the information. I just also want to check that I, I'm understanding your situation correctly. Let me just confirm, is this the timeline you're looking at? Is this what you're looking at in terms of success? I just want to get, I just, just want to understand your, you, what I, when I asked you what does success look like, you said this, and then you can hold them accountable to their timeline. So Sarah, I hope that helps. Um, Faith, I appreciate your comment. Thank you very much. Um, if anybody else has got questions, anyone that's watching live, fire the questions at me right now, because um, I'm going to stay live. How are we going for time? Uh, we've got about 10 more minutes. So I'm just going to quickly, we're, going to, we're doing a live stream here. Um, I'm going to give Luke an introduction to our podcast. So we are live, obviously. What we do is we pull the audio recording out of this and we put it up on the Kobe, Kobe Simmet audio experience. So what I'm going to give for you guys right now, because I forgot to do it at the beginning, beginning, and while you guys think about more questions, I'm going to record the introduction that you'll be able to hear on the Kobe Simmet audio experience. So if you haven't checked out our podcast yet, I would really, really appreciate it if you go and check out on your favorite podcast platform, the Kobe Simmet Audio Experience. Okay, so here we go. If you're somebody that's thinking about getting into selling, if you're somebody who hasn't yet sold, if you're somebody who just wants to know the 101 of selling, welcome back to the Kobe Simmet Audio Experience. In this episode, we've just been discussing some tips and tricks and giving insights to people for what they can do when they're just getting into selling. So I hope you've been enjoying the Kobe Simmet audio experience. If you think about someone while you're listening to this sales and selling episode, maybe it's someone that's a friend or a family member and they are thinking about getting into sales and selling. In this episode, we've gone through and talked about all of our little tips and insights for people who have never sold before and they just want to learn some one-on-one basics. We've got some great book recommendations and right at the end of the episode, we've got some great questions. I hope you enjoyed Enjoy it. I'll see you right here soon on the KBC Minute Audio Experience. Enjoy. Okay, so has anybody else got any questions? So Luke, that's a timestamp of 11.22. He's got that. So you'll hear that uh, if you want to go and check out the Kobe Simmet Audio Experience, you're going to hear that introduction. Give Luke a couple of days to edit up the podcast and get that up. And uh, he'll have it this afternoon. So if you want to hear this podcast this afternoon, uh, in about three or four hours, Luke is telling me he's going to do it straight away, straight after this episode. So I hope this has been helpful for everybody. Uh, I'm going to be right back here in 23 hours in the episode as we talk about how to do more internal influence uh, in your organization with project management. We're going to be talking about some of the great principles of influence. And I can't see any more questions there on YouTube. And I can't see any more questions there on LinkedIn. Okay, for those of you watching live, I would really appreciate if you could hit any of the like buttons, any of the subscribe buttons that are around you. If you are watching live on YouTube, we go live on YouTube every week. There's over a thousand videos there now on the YouTube channel. I'd, it'd mean a lot to me if you could basically check out our podcast. It would really sincerely mean a lot to me if you could check out our YouTube channel. Uh, and if you need any assistance from me, uh, tag anybody that, um, that you want help from in the comments. So thank you, Simon. I really appreciate the, uh, the feedback there and the comment. Um, I'm more than happy to do this. I just want, if you guys aren't going to doing, do any sales and selling, at least learn sales and selling so you don't get sold to. Um, you, you, you can start to measure people on a scale of zero to 10, whether they're a good salesperson, and you can go in and control those purchases that you're doing in life, particularly when you're starting to do things like buying houses and cars and things that are really ex experienced. Um, yes, uh, Mark, the recording, uh, the recording will be available as soon as you wake up. So the podcast experience, uh, the Kobe Simon audio experience podcast, will take a couple of hours. Uh, the YouTube recording is available right now. Uh, as soon as we close off the YouTube, uh, that, that recording is going to be available on the YouTube channel for you right now. And of course, if you're watching live on LinkedIn there, Mark, uh, come back to the posts on my profile. So if you go onto my profile on LinkedIn and come back to my posts, this live stream will be available as soon as we close it off. So you can I can watch the recording. Um, tag yourself in the comments as well. Uh, Benjamin, I appreciate the comments. Um, yes, I can post the titles of the books. So I will do that for you. What I will do, Benjamin, is I will take some photos of these books and I'll put them on my Instagram. 
Uh, and I will also throw a picture up on my LinkedIn profile so that you can get their copies of the book. So um, I don't know why I'm holding up Working with Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Coleman, but it's in my sales kit because we think about emotional intelligence. <laughs> I'm going to put that one down. Um, but yes, I will mention uh, the sales books and I'll put, I'll put a photo of them on my Instagram as soon as I hang up. Uh, and we and we close off this live stream for you, Ben. So it'll be on LinkedIn, Instagram, and um, and hopefully that'll that'll help you. So look out for a photo uh, on our profile of the books I've recommended. Brian Tracy. If you search anything from Brian Tracy, if you want to do a screenshot right now, get ready for a screenshot on your mobile device or on your phone and screen sh screenshot this. Stand by. Let me pick that up. These are great little books to get started. So if you want a screenshot right now for anyone who's taking notes, excellent. That's a really great way to get books I hold up in these presentations is just do a screenshot on your desktop device or your laptop or your mobile device. But come back to this timestamp, which looks like about 55 minutes into the video. But, but I will post photos of these on my Instagram. So Kobe Simat on Instagram. Uh, it would mean a lot to me if you followed me on Instagram because you get lots of our, our tips and insights and motivational quotes that the team helped me with. If there is content that you guys want me to talk about, if there's a topic that you want me to talk about, I'm a CEO here at Best Practice. I'm running Best Practice as a business. I'm dealing with customers every day. I'm operating this organization. I'm here to help you guys. More than happy to talk about any of the topics that you think would be relevant. If you've ever got a question, you don't want to ask it publicly, you can always direct message me on LinkedIn. I do my best to get back to all the direct messages on LinkedIn. There are hundreds, uh, but I do my best to scroll through and, and my team helps me with that as well. So. If you guys don't see me out and about, you know how this goes. If you don't see me out and about, if you don't see me on social media, you're definitely gonna see me right here next time on Best Practice TV. So keep commenting, keep questions, hit that like button, hit subscribe, it'll mean a lot to us. And we'll have that podcast up for you very shortly. Check us out on Instagram and I'll post the photos of the books we've been talking about in this live webinar. And I will see you in 23 hours time right here on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.